Good afternoon, everybody. If we can get everybody's attention down this way, good afternoon, everybody. And most importantly, welcome to Ward 6 on the water. Isn't it a beautiful day outside today? My name is Charles Allen. I'm the Ward 6 Council Member, and I could not be more thrilled to be here with you today to really see this incredible celebration of what DC Central Kitchen um, has created. And frankly, to all of you who've had a hand in this, what you have helped create. Now, Ward 6 um, has a very special relationship with DC Central Kitchen. Uh, on the other side of Ward 6, just a little bit north, DC Central Kitchen has been working hard and serving for such a long time, and I believe 45 million meals um, has come from that space. And I am so thrilled that DC Central Kitchen chose to come stay in Ward 6, but to come in Buzzer Point. Um, I want to note from the council, I've got a couple of my colleagues that are here. I want to make sure I give them a shout out. I saw Councilmember Robert White, Christina Henderson, and Brianne Nadeau, and there may be others, but I at least saw them. Could we give them a big round of applause? I know that I've also got one of my ANC 6D commissioners, Ricky Kramer, here. So let's give her a round of applause. The council and our ANC here in Ward 6 are just so excited about having the DC Central Kitchen choose this location. I remember meeting over the years with Mike and Alex and the whole team trying to think about where to go. And there were a lot of scenarios that played out over the years. Um, but I wanted to fight tooth and nail to be able to have DC Central Kitchen locate on Buzzard Point. And I think for me, it's about what this organization really represents because it is so much more than a meal. DC Central Kitchen creates training, opportunity, food and meals, but the thing that it does best in my mind is the sense of hope that it creates. And having it located here in Southwest, where I have so many longtime residents they're going to be able to see the hope that DC Central Kitchen can provide, be able to take advantage of the opportunities for training and jobs and careers. It's going to be phenomenal. And it's a really wonderful marriage of mission for DC Central Kitchen and an opportunity and hope for the community that exists around it. And so I'm really thrilled and excited with that. So today is a celebration. Today is a milestone of where we are, and I can't wait. I want to also give a special shout out to my good friend Thomas Penny. Uh, who has helped provide a lot of leadership. Not just at DC Central Kitchen, but really specifically for this phenomenal and amazing effort, transformative for this organization and where it's gonna go. And speaking of the organization, DC Central Kitchen would not be what it is without some incredible leadership with Mike Curtin. And so I'm really excited to bring up Mike. So if you will, make a little noise and help me welcome Mike Curtin to the stage. Good afternoon. Thank you, Con Council Member Allen, for that warm introduction and your partnership and advocacy through the years. Partner is a word that we use a lot in this city and in the nonprofit sector. But the word has a new meaning to me today. In a few minutes, uh, we are going to be really excited to show you the new Michael R. Klein Center for Jobs and Justice. Now, I want to say, that it is not finished yet. All right, so please, again, this is not a grand opening. This is a first look. We're getting dangerously close. Uh, but, and even if you think it doesn't look like we're close, trust me, we are. Uh, we are getting close to that 36,000 square foot facility with a best in class commercial kitchen to prepare healthy meals for our children and our neighbors. It will have a spectacular teaching kitchen and classroom with the best culinary equipment and learning technology so our students can be fully prepared as they enter the workforce. It has cold storage for fresh local foods, a welcoming cafe, and for those of you who, who know our current space and have been there, it has something that we have never, ever had, windows. <laughs> but I am, I am incredibly proud of the work that we have done in that windowless shelter basement for 30 years. We have strengthened bodies, empowered minds, and built communities, 
and we will do more of those things than we ever have thanks to the partnership of everyone here today and the thousands of people who couldn't join us. With your support in this glorious new home, we will increase the number of people we train by 150% to nearly 250 individuals each year. We will create 50 new full-time living wage jobs right here at DC Central Kitchen as we double our daily meal production to nearly 25,000 nutritious, locally sourced meals every day. We will buy more food from local farmers, bring record quantities of healthy food to small DC corner stores, and generate more than $150 million each year in measurable benefits to this city. We will also join forces with our partners at Dreaming Out Loud, an outstanding food justice and social enterprise led by our friend Chris Bradshaw, who is over here somewhere. Give Chris a round of applause. Chris and his team do amazing work to expand opportunities for black farmers and food entrepreneurs by co-locating with us in our new home and modeling the type of deep, intentional collaboration and partnership we should expect in our sector. Because of all of your partnership, we have a powerful opportunity to reimagine the role of mission-driven nonprofits and social enterprises like DC Central Kitchen and Dreaming Out Loud to contribute to the economic development, operate in dignified spaces, and compete for food contracts on a level playing field. Together, we can use food not as a means to simply feed people and alleviate hunger, but rip hunger out by its roots and build a fairer, more prosperous, more inclusive city for everyone. That is the real power of the Klein Center for Jobs and Justice. Today, I'm really pleased and just terribly excited to share that the construction of the center is in its final phase. The raw space we started work on earlier this year has come alive as a Equipment and furnishings are being installed as paint is drying and we are only awaiting for the arrival of our interior glass and door and office systems so we can apply to our friends at the District of Columbia for our certificate of occupancy and begin our historic move. <laughs> Two years ago, our Bringing the Kitchen Home campaign and our incredible campaign committee chaired by our friends Thomas Penny and Jose Andres set out with an ambitious goal of raising $35 million to make this facility a reality. Along the way, we have been deeply moved by the generosity shown here by so many people here today, uh, too many to name, but I hope you'll allow me to thank just a few. Mike Klein, I believe Michael's over here, our anchor investor and namesake of our building, the Jay Willard and Alice S. Marriott Foundation and Marriott International who have named our Marriott Culinary Job Training Kitchen. The Harry and Jeanette Weinberg Foundation who have lent their name to our Culinary Job Training Classroom. And Craig Newmark. And Craig Newmark who has named our studio for Zealous Communications. The District of Columbia, including our special guest, Mayor Bowser, Deputy Mayor Falchicchio, and Director Zeilinger, Wells, Whitfield, Smith, and Morris Hughes. The DC Council, represented here today by certainly Charles Allen, but also I believe we were expecting anyway, council members Bonds, Henderson, Pinto, Robert White, and Trayon White. And dear friends, like the Brownriggs, the Sheehys, the Creamers, the Steenlands, the Englands, the Fliegers, the Browns, the Tyrees, and the Shermans. And our strategic partners at CAHIC, Chase and the Reinvest Reinvestment Fund, who provided vital new market tax credit funding for this project. And before, as, as I'm thanking folks, uh, I just wanna say too that I am, uh, I, I wanna thank my parents 
for being a, a model for me. Um, my, my mother can't be here today, but my father, Mike Curtin, the real Mike Curtin, as he would say, is here. Thanks, Dad. And of course, uh, my amazing wife, Maureen McDonald, is also here, who has supported me along this journey for all these years. Um, thanks to these partners and many, many more, I am pleased and humbled to share that we are now at 94% of our original goal. This represents incredible progress during a pandemic and a recession. And for those of you that have already given generously, I cannot thank you enough for bringing us this far. For those of you who are considering a gift, I hope you'll make that investment in the Bringing the Kitchen Home campaign today and help us reach that $35 million goal. Along the way, we have listened closely to our culinary students, our frontline staff, and our community partners about their aspirations for this facility, how we can make it truly accessible for them, how we can best respond to the lingering challenges of this last two and a half years. And through those conversations, we have identified an additional $5 million in vital programmatic expansion to help us make the most of this new facility when it opens. And of that sum, we have already raised $1 million. Although he couldn't be here today, our dear friend and founder of Craigslist, Craig Newmark, has generously pledged to match the next $250,000 in donations toward our essential programming needs so we can be ready on day one. Please join me in thanking Craig for his incredible commitment. A year ago, when some of us gathered in this room to officially launch this campaign, we heard from a friend of mine, Joseph Tolbert, who is here with us today. Joseph graduated from our culinary job training program in 2015 after years of involvement with the justice system. He thrived in our program and was hired at DC Central Kitchen. But when he was hosting a group of volunteers from Hilton, his energy and enthusiasm caught their eye and they offered him a spot offered him a job on the spot. And I think we have at least one of our friends from Hilton here today, so I just want to say no hard feelings. Um, he spent the last seven years at Hilton and now serves on our board of directors. And since he spoke here last year, Joseph has shared some exciting news with me. He was selected for an extremely competitive and prestigious management development program at Hilton, and he's spending the next nine months as a management fellow preparing to enter management in a hotel of his own. That's the work we do at DC Central Kitchen. That's the work you make possible. And that's the work embodied by our next speaker, an outstanding alumna of our training program and now an entrepreneur. Ms. Samiko Hansen has been so glad, I, I, Ms. Samiko, I am so glad that you are here today to share your thoughts on your journey and tell us about where you are headed next. Samiko, please, welcome, please join me in welcoming Samiko Hansen. Hello, friends. <laughs> I am so excited to be here today to share my journey on how the culinary job training program at DC Central Kitchen changed my life. After years of abusing drugs and alcohol, I entered DC Central Kitchen very broken, lacking consistency, confidence, character, and commitment. However, I had a strong desire for change. What brought me to DC Central Kitchen? Well, simple enough, I saw an advertisement. Despite the ad sparking my interest, to be completely honest, it didn't seem doable at the time. I didn't exactly live close to the kitchen and I didn't have a car or a license due to some poor choices that I've made. To make matters even worse, I had some pending charges as well. 
I loved cooking, but lacked the confidence and skills that I needed, so I decided to take a chance and I applied. And what do you know, I got in. I love cooking and being in the kitchen and being at DC Central Kitchen. Um, sorry. I wanted it so bad, I went from staying up till three o'clock in the morning with no purpose to getting up at three o'clock in the morning, taking the bus and the train to get to DC Central Kitchen on time. Reflecting on my experience at DC Central Kitchen and the CJT Kitchen, from learning how to fabricate a fish, a whole chicken, and proper knife skills, naming the different knives, learning financial literacy, Th those are more than, those are the lessons that were taught at CJT. I went, they went far beyond cooking. Learning the fabrication of a fish and knife skills were definitely a challenge for me. But I did it through CJT. Also, the financial literacy was very important so that when we start making money, we know how to manage it. Self-empowerment, was really important. It taught us how to overcome our fears and face our challenges instead of running from them. The CJT Cafe was where we, the students, put together a menu of dishes. We worked really hard throughout the week, served them to our community. We had so much fun doing this. It kind of gave us an experience of like running our own business. By doing the, seat, the, um, doing the cafe, we learned the pro entire process from start to finish, including, but not only, preparation of the food, taking orders, fixing the orders, staying within, uh, staying within our designated station, getting the orders out to the, our customers, et cetera, et cetera. DC Central Kitchen changed my life. It gave me the tools and the skills that, I, that was needed to start, manage, and operate my very own business. Someone like me who did not go to college, who chose a different path, but then wanted to change. DC Central Kitchen did that for me. It gave me a second chance at life. It gave me the opportunity to be successful. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or other, or if, I'm sorry. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change we seek. Those are the words of Barack Obama. I believe DC Central Kitchen is the change that we want to see. I believe DC Central Kitchen saw a need in our community, so they sowed a seed, they watered it, and it continues to grow and build so people like myself can have the opportunity to grow, change, and prosper. This amazing expansion, state-of-the-art training kitchen will allow DC Central Kitchen to grow the culinary job training program by 150% in the coming years. This is extremely awesome. It gives more men and women like myself the opportunity to change their lives and possibly become entrepreneurs, start their own business, make, a, make their family proud, and make a name for themselves. DC Central Kitchen gave me the confidence that I needed to run my own business. Who would have thought this drug addicted, alcoholic, with low self-esteem could woman who could be an entrepreneur, self-empowered, full of confidence, and ready to take on the world? There were several ups and there were several ups and downs. There were times where I wanted to throw in the towel. But through all of that, with my faith and the support of DC Central Kitchen, I am now the creator and CEO of Fellowship Over Food, LLC.
I am currently working on my LLC for Queen's Egg Rolls, which is one of my several branches of Fellowship Over Food. My delicious specialty egg rolls are a huge hit among my customers. I bake a mean red velvet cake. <laughs> I have now created, oh, like I mentioned before, we've learned how to make our sauces from scratch at DC Central Kitchen. I have now created two specialty sauces and perfected it and working on branding and getting them in the grocery stores. So look out for that. In 2018, when I walked into DC Central Kitchen, I was not the person you see here today. I am now confident, strong, ambitious, self-empowered, an entrepreneur, and I've been clean for clean and sober for four and a half years. <laughs> September is National Recovery Month. In honor of that, I am selling recovery cupcakes decorated purple. I plan on donating a portion of the proceeds. Also, in honor of Recovery Month, hi, my name is Samiko Hansen. Thanks for letting me share. So that's what it's all about. And uh, as a matter of fact, you can see Letitia Proctor. I think we should order maybe three or 400 recovery cupcakes. <laughs> and uh, Letitia, she leads our sales effort for our hotels, but I think this is an opportunity for us to support the cause. And so I'm serious, you can see Letitia and we can get an order together such that we can support you. So good afternoon, my name is Thomas Penny. I'm president of Donahoe Hospitality, and it's been my honor to serve as co-chair of the Bringing in the Kitchen Home campaign. I've been involved with the kitchen for over two decades. I've hired graduates of, of its training program. We've donated food. As a matter of fact, one of our hotels was the first hotel to donate food on a consistent basis to the kitchen almost, almost 30 years ago and we've advocated alongside them for a workforce system that connects more Washingtonians with the opportunities offered by our local hospitality sector. Today, the advocacy becomes a reality. At a time when our industry finds itself with the highest number of vacancies in the history of our business, we know employers and training providers need to work hand in hand we need nonprofits and public agencies to develop strategic partnerships and offer innovative solutions together. We need to remove barriers to training and employment while helping residents continue to move up in their careers once they secure a job. All those things will happen right here in this new facility. I want to personally thank Mayor Bowser and her team. As a matter of fact, I think Deputy Mayor Fulcheckio is here. I want to thank him. I also want to thank DC, uh, the DC Council. Uh, Council Member Charles Allen is here. Council Member Robert White's here. Council Member, uh, Council Member Christina Henderson is here. And I want to thank the entire council for making the resources available. Am I missing someone? Oh, Council Member Brianne Nadeau is here, Ward 1, uh, for supporting the kitchen. Let's give them a round of applause. None of this would have been possible without your support, and we're grateful. And so, again, as Mike said, you know, I think they're going to be going for a certificate of occupancy in a short while, and based on who's in the room, I think there's a, there's a, a large chance that they'll be successful in getting a certificate of occupancy. That's right, that's right. But uh, this is an exciting time. It's the byproduct of a lot of hard work and a lot of folks making a contribution. And uh, all of this is made real thanks to your support. 
And without further ado, I want to bring up our mayor, your mayor, Muriel Bowser. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am really delighted to be here. I want to congratulate you, Mike, and the entire team at DC Central Kitchen. Give them a big round of applause. And I have to acknowledge the real Mike Curtin. Where's the real Mike Curtin right there? Let's give him a big round of applause. It's awesome. And I am here to speak on behalf of all of us in Washington, D.C., who are just so proud of the work that you uh, have been doing uh, in our community for these decades. And we're very excited about this expansion and what it means for your future. Uh, our entire administration recognizes how important it is to partner with organizations that have a demonstrated track record of putting DC residents to work. And I think what we just heard is not only are you focused on job training, getting people on a pathway, as I like to say, to the middle class so that they can afford a great life in Washington, DC, what happens uh, in your program is the transformation of lives. And that is what, if we can learn those lessons and replicate those lessons across the district, we will be a better Washington, D.C. I think I can speak for the members of the council in saying our investments, the city's partnership uh, with D.C. Central Kitchen is one that we look forward to. I want to acknowledge our host council member, Charles Allen, at-large council member, Robert White, who's just in front of me. I understand that Brianne Nadeau and Christina Henderson are also here, uh, and they know well the investments that we have been able to put forward. Members of my team, uh, the deputy mayor's office, DSLBD, our director is here, I see Tommy Wells here, our WIC, our Workforce Investment Council, uh, literally spend every day uh, figuring out how the investments that we make can make sure more Washingtonians are participating in the prosperity that we are growing in this city. We have a lot to be proud of in Washington, right here in Ward 6, looking at Buzzard Point. It's transformed, isn't it? Uh, we're going to see this restaurant wasn't here. These jobs weren't here. This good time and fun that people here have at the point weren't here. There will be more housing opportunities on the point as well, and even greater connections with our beautiful Anacostia and Potomac Rivers. So these are the things that we're working on together, but making sure that more people can participate in a growing and prosperous Washington is what DC Central Kitchen can help us all do. I am just really honored uh, to, to be here. I'm honored to have participated in events before. And actually, the very first time that I think that I met Chef Jose Andres was at a DC Central Kitchen event, where he told the soon-to-be graduates his personal life story and what food had done to transform his life and what being in the food business and in hospitality had meant to him. So we know that Jose's story can be the story of many people, uh, and DC Central Kitchen is a start. So congratulations, I like that fundraising success. Sounds like you have a little bit more to go, and it looks like we can, you might be able to get it done today. So good luck, everybody. Ladies and general, gentlemen, I want you to introduce you to the world chef, Chef Jose Andres. Well, I mean, you know I live in Maryland, but the only reason I always want to come back to be in Washington, D.C., not as a business guy, but as you, a Washingtonian living in D.C., is just to, work, to vote for this amazing woman. 
So yeah, that's an endorsement, and you know it. All right. Uh, I don't know you guys, but I'm, um, I just came back from New York, uh, and I'm a little bit emotional. I don't know why. It's just, man. Um, OK, so everybody put me some, some notes. You know I always speak from the heart. But because they want me to hit on so many points, just they're putting me. So I'm sorry. I'm going to think, read from a teleprompter. So if you don't see me, my natural me, well, it's because I'm trying to hit the points. But uh, you know, uh, Mayor, uh, uh, members of the council, uh, Mike Cortian, my friend, my hero, um, my co-chair, Thomas Penny. Where are you? Where are you? I don't have glasses. Love you, my man. Uh, my friends, um, Mike. John, you, you, are, you are saints on earth, you are angels. But more important, the people of this is Central Kitchen. Um, my name is Jose Andres, and I always say I am a cook. And in a way, I'm very emotional, is because in this room is a lot of people that made me who I am. Even people I never met who impact me in who I became. But if it's a place that really understood the value of community, of meeting people I will never have a chance to meet because we live in different parts of the world. Yeah, you saw the teleprompter where it was because I'm going to get to it. <laughs> um, it's just the realization that I became the person I became. Uh, because the impact that this is on the kitchen had in me. Um, when you're looking to belong, and that's what, what, Central, uh, what this is on kitchen does, gives people a place to belong. Uh, and you don't know what to do in the world besides going to work. And then you see the purpose that the organization has. That's why I'm emotional. Because this kitchen was supposed to happen a long time ago because we need more DC Central Kitchens in America and around the world. So, you know, uh, Dorothy Bell, who was this amazing woman who would tell me I didn't know how to grab a knife and I think she was right. <laughs> me, the great chef who's in dress. So I'm going to go to the speech. Uh, that's what I wanted to say, really, from the heart. Um, so you know I'm a Washingtonian with an accent. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I arrived here almost 30 years ago by next year. And I was a young immigrant looking for a place to belong. And uh, I found this place, as I said, in uh, Penn Quarter, where I opened Haleo. I'm not doing here. Uh, you know, a sales speech, but yeah, I opened Haleo 30 years ago, 7th and E. I mean, first person I ever meet, a guy that I thought was nuts because he told me he knew everybody around the world. And then I found out he was Senator Patrick Moynihan. That was Washington those days. Right? So you know, Haleo was across from the missing soldier's office. And I know many of you, you've never visited there. The home of Clara Barton, people. The home of Clara Barton, hero of heroes. So visit the missing soldier's office. Um, and, and, and Clara Barton, she, she did something as simple as bringing food to soldiers that were wounded so many years ago, over a century ago. And uh, you know, uh, Cafe Atlantico is the place I met my wife, Patricia, when, when we began going dancing. That's all the things Washington has become with me. But, Again, as I said, this is Central Kitchen is really what, what, what gave me that sense of belonging. Obviously, my good friend and partner, and one of the chairs at the beginning, uh, uh, Rob Wilder, who still is a friend and uh, an inspiration for me when he cannot be here with us. But when I'm, yeah, we can clap for Rob Wilder. He's leader of leaders, always behind. Much of what I've done in my life is because Rob Wilder has been always behind me. But like to Mike and me, a person that really had a huge impact was meeting Robert Egger. Many of you know Robert Egger. And if you don't, uh, you will. Because you should. Because this is Sandra Kitchen was his dream. 
And Robert Egger, when I was 25, he told me something like a stick inside me, like deep in the DNA. He told me that charity is too often about the redemption of the giver, when it must be about the liberation of the receiver. Yes, you can clap on that phrase, because to me, it's the phrase we all have to aim for. And you know, when as a young boy, I began realizing, you know, that where uh, USDA Secretary Dan Glickman uh, that told me the importance of a smart policy, like the Good Samaritan Food, the donation app, that you could help restaurants like mine and others around the city, around America, to put an end to food waste, where a woman, and I want a big round of applause for her because she is watching over us, Marianne Ali, and yes, give the round, Woman of women, Marianne, where the cafe at the new library is named after. Always with a smile when I'm always a cranky boy. You know, she, she, she showed me, yeah, that ending food waste was important. And everybody talks about food waste, but you, you know what she, she told me? That what really is important is that we don't waste people's life. That's all the lessons I kept learning in this Central Kitchen. And so, you know, just by training the men, by training the woman, like the stories we've been listening, that somehow they've been forgotten by the system. All of a sudden, we could be giving voice to the voiceless and in the process, empowering the local economy. You know, this is Central Kitchen was the place where President Clinton came and recognized the importance of volunteering and service. And in a way, it helped me to believe that any one of us, anyone, that's a matter of the skill you may have, we can all make a difference in our community. And so, you know, in our community, last year, 36% of our neighbors, still today, uh, 36% were food insecure, and we can go across America, where too many neighborhoods still don't have grocery stores. And we can change that, but we don't. At least not with the speed we need. The urgency of now is yesterday, people. So where the food we eat too often is making us sick right now, instead of making us healthy. Healthy in, in body, but healthy in spirit. Where we must improve the quality of the food we feed our children and to our shelters. You know, this is Andrew Kitchen, uh, where restaurants like mine, really, we need trained men and women to move our inclusive economy forward. Imagine all the things this is Andrew Kitchen is doing at one. This is Central Kitchen has never been about throwing money at the problem. It's been about investing in the solution. Every dollar we put is multiplied by four. This was not in the teleprompter. <laughs> but guys, I do believe like you do, that food, instead of being part of the problem, must be part of the solution. And that's why I kept coming back to this is Central Kitchen after my first day of volunteering because I couldn't not keep being involved with organization that they were thanking us, the chefs and the volunteers, because we were going there to help and teach. But actually, we were the ones that we had to be thanking DC Central Kitchen and their family, because they were giving us the opportunity to serve and to learn. And that's one of the reasons I hosted Capital Food Fight, making a fool of myself very often for almost 20 years and helping not only raise money, because it's not about the money, it's just about what DC Central Kitchen keeps accomplishing better than any other organization I know anywhere in the world. And so I was very honored to serve uh, as a board chair, even everybody knows, and it's no secret that I'm always the worst board chair in the history but I'm always supported by people that make me look good. When they make you chairman emeritus, <laughs> you know they're 
Okay, your time is past. Move on. <laughs> I don't think it's a good thing when they make you chairman emeritus. So, just to be clear, I said it at the beginning, <laughs> but the team put that also in the, in the talking points. Yeah, that's where I found my place to belong. Yes, when they tell me I am American, yes. I'm a Spanish American, yes. I'm a Washingtonian, yes. But you know who I am too? I am a DC Central Kitchener. Because they made me be part. They even gave me my first graduation before I even ever graduated from anywhere. And I don't mean that as a joke. I never graduated and they gave me my first diploma as a graduation. That was important in more ways you think. I didn't took it as a joke, I took it as, shit, I got a graduation from one of the organizations I respect the most. So that's why I've been so humbled to be the co-chair of this campaign and people, thanks to you, the ones that already contributed and the ones of you that you are gonna contribute after today, because I want to leave from here with all the funds paid for. And I'm not letting anybody leave those doors without that money being in the bank. So if you want to leave this place today, you may start just writing the checks. I mean, I mean to push it? No. That was not in the, this was not in the, this was not in the, in the, in the thing. I'm only looking to the right because if I look to the left, I only see water. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's good. So, today. As I'm proud to announce that I, my wife, myself, you know, I got a, a big gift from a good friend that is helping me just move money around in projects I believe, and also my wife and I, that we contribute. So today we are very proud that my wife and I, we are making a gift to all Central Kitchen that, that gives me so much joy in more ways than one, of uh, half a million dollars. So, so together, and believe me, I cannot, if one day I become with more money, believe me, they will not need to be raising any funds from anybody. Because this is the organization you're investing and you are having a return on investment every day, every hour, every meal. So together we can use our new kitchen to write new recipes to feed a hungry city. Man, this was great, who brought that? And in the process, we will continue, people, to use food as a tool to strengthen bodies. You bright every day better, Mike. Empower minds and build communities. So the gift of my wife and I today is a challenge to everyone here. I already said it before, right? And everyone at home today. And everyone who will have a home in this new facility. So whatever is supporting the Bring in the Kitchen Home campaign, which is only 6% away already, he said that, but we are, right, we, are, we are paying for this right now, right? So the 6% probably is already, you are or, or, already over. Thank you for all of you that are doing this as I speak. Or investing in programs like Healthy Corners, amazing project which is bringing fresh, affordable fruit and vegetables to markets in World 7 and World 8 and beyond. And in food deserts as we speak. And in a way showing our leaders in the capital, what they should be doing. That's the amazing work that DC Central Kitchen does. So earlier, because we heard Mike uh, speak and mentioning my, my, my good friend, Craig, New Craig Newmark, who is also, as, you, as he said, matching donation to the kitchens program is starting today. So the kitchen needs all of us at this critical time, and we can all do our part, I said that. I am a cook, I said that. Craig is a nerd, he, I, I'm not calling him a nerd, he says he's a nerd. Uh, but we all have a place in this Central Kitchen. And as I said, that's what I learned from kitchen students years ago. Uh, people don't want our pity. People want our respect. They want to be part. They want to contribute, to be part of something bigger for themselves, their families, and for the communities they are part of to achieve their potential. And your support can make that a reality. Today, my friends, is not the end of this campaign. 
it is the start of a new chapter for this amazing organization and for Washington, D.C. to show the rest of America and the rest of the world how an NGO can be really making an impact in our communities. You know, these walls of the Michael R. Klein Center for Jobs and Justice will outlast all of us for generations to come. These doors will always be open to the food fighters in our city. I've been meeting leaders today that I knew about them, but I never met. This city is full of young people making an impact in this city and around the world. And I believe there will be always room for everyone. As you know, I always say, at this longer table, in this building, we're about to go visit. So I am Jose Andres, and I endorse this message. Thank you, and God bless. OK. Thank you, Jose. Um, so I, I don't know if anyone else caught what might have been a Freudian slip or not, Jose. I, I think you said you were giving half a million dollars to World Central Kitchen. I think you meant DC Central Kitchen, right? Just, just, just so we have that clear. I want to go back to the videotape and make sure we're, the, we're good. But I, I appreciate it. So we have three quarters of a million dollars pledged to match your gifts today uh, and going forward for the programmatic needs that we've identified going into this new space. So thank you, Jose. Uh, thank you, Thomas, our co-chairs, our amazing campaign committee, our board of directors, uh, chaired by Gail Chambers, who's here today, uh, former board members, all of our speakers, Councilmember Allen, Mayor Bowser, Ms. Hansen. Uh, thank you to our uh, hosts here at The Point, Greg Kasten and his amazing staff here at The Point. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you all. I I'd also like to give a quick shout out to my good friend Herb Miller and his colleague Paige Grislak. Without their intense belief in us for over a decade, we would not be here today. Thank you, Herb and Paige. So these devoted partners represent the thousands of people who have brought us here today and who I am filled with gratitude for. For those of you who have already given to this critical project, thank you, and I hope you will spread the word about today's Incredible matching challenges from Jose and Craig, totaling a good $750,000. For those of you who are joining the effort for the first time, I hope you will consider making a gift today so it can be doubled by these amazing partners. Our staff stationed near the back of the room, staff on the left-hand side, on my left-hand side, will be happy to talk to you about giving options so we can reach our goals. And I invite you to visit and share our campaign website, Bringing the Kitchen Home, Dot org. And to see how your contribution will live on in our community, I invite everyone to take a self-guided tour of the new Klein Center for Jobs and Justice just out the back door to the right and at the next corner at 2nd and V. Our staff will be stationed along the way to make sure you get to the right spot. And our Chief uh, Development Officer, Alex Moore, Alex is in towards the back there, uh, will be leading the first group over in just a few minutes. Um, remember, this is a construction site tour, uh, and that's, so uh, just be careful. Uh, the space there and the point here, the food and the drinks, will be open for the next hour or so. So please feel free to enjoy a drink, some food, before you head around the corner to take a look. And before you go, and this is the, truly the last thing. I'm not just pulling a Jose on you. This is really the last thing. So, I'm just kidding, man. I love you, brother. So and before you go, I, uh, if, in the back, we have, um, I want you to do something special for our students, the very first job training students who graduate from this new space. We have a large card, and I'd like you to sign and leave a message for our students, and we'll um, replicate that, reproduce it as a personal keepsake, and give that to them for their graduation, uh, on their, their graduation day. So we thought that would be a little more meaningful than yet another tote bag. So please um, be part of that, if you would be so kind. Thank you again so very, very much for all your support over the years, over the decades. Thank you for being here today, and thank you for helping us bring the kitchen home.